On this worksheet, we're gonna go over a few different types of reactions of alkenes. All of these reactions are going to involve us adding something to the two carbon atoms of the carbon-carbon double bond in the alkene. So in all of these reactions, we're going to be adding something to this carbon, and we'll also be adding something to this carbon. And in the process of adding these things to the carbon-carbon double bond, the double bond is gonna get converted to a single bond. So let's take a look at the examples. The first First four problems that we're going to work on are all the same type of problem. These problems are called hydrogenation reactions, and in these reactions we are adding H2 to the carbon-carbon double bond. So that means one of the carbon atoms will get one hydrogen and the other carbon atom will get the second hydrogen. This reaction does require a metal catalyst platinum, and that metal catalyst is written underneath the reaction arrow, that's just indicating that it's a catalyst. So again, for every one of these reactions, we'll be adding one hydrogen to each of the two carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond. This is going to simply convert it from a double bond to a single bond. And when we're drawing a molecule in line structure like we're doing here, we just simply have to redraw the molecule with the double bond shown being converted to a single bond. It is important, though, for you to remember and to keep in mind that in this reaction, you are adding two hydrogen atoms. Maybe we'll add that, I'll add that to this last one. We're adding one hydrogen atom to this carbon, and the second hydrogen is added to this carbon right here. So this reaction is pretty straightforward, just simply because all you have to do is add a couple of hydrogens and convert the bond from double to single. The second reaction that we're going to look at is very similar. This reaction is called halogenation. Uh, so it's basically the same thing, but instead of adding two hydrogens, we're going to be adding two bromines or two chlorines. Again, the bromines are going to be added to the carbons of the double bond, or the chlorines will be added to the carbons of the double bond, and this will cause the double bond to be converted to a single bond. So we can redraw the molecule without the double bond. We're adding, again, we're adding things to these two carbons right here. One of those carbon atoms gets a bromine, and the other carbon atom gets a bromine. When you draw those bromines on the molecule, it doesn't make a difference which way you point them in your drawing. Um, so for example, I could have drawn it like this with both of them pointing up if I felt like it. There's a lot of different ways where we can draw this molecule. The only thing that really matters is making sure that the bromines get placed in the correct spots on the, on the correct carbons. Let's look at the next example. So here's our molecule without the double bond. These are the two carbon atoms that we're working on. We're gonna put one chlorine on each one of those carbon atoms. And again, it does not matter which way you point the chlorines in your drawing. You can point them anywhere you want. Here's our next example. Here's our molecule. These are the two carbon atoms that we're working with. This time we're adding Br and Br to those carbon atoms. So we're gonna put one bromine onto each carbon atom, just like that. And then here's our last example. Here is our molecule. And these are the two carbon atoms that we're working on right here and here, and we're gonna be adding bromines to those carbon atoms. So we'll put one bromine on this carbon and we'll put one bromine on this carbon. Now the last two examples are a little bit trickier. Um, the next two problems here, these reactions, we're putting a hydrogen onto one carbon and a bromine on the other. We're still doing the same kind of thing in terms of one hydrogen is going to go onto one of these carbons, a bromine is going to go on the other. The carbon-carbon double bond is going to be converted to a single bond. So we're putting something here and something here. But this problem is a little bit trickier because we are putting two different atoms onto this molecule. So the question is, um, you know, where should those different atoms go? Should we put the hydrogen on the carbon on the left or should we put the hydrogen on the carbon on the right? So I'm saying, should we, should we set it up like this? Or should we set it up like this? Now, to help us decide, only, only one of these is the correct answer. It's not 
um, they're not both made. To help us decide where these different atoms should go, we have something called Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule gives us like guidance on where the hydrogen should go. So it's going to help us decide if the hydrogen goes here or if the hydrogen goes here. Markovnikov's rule says that this hydrogen needs to go onto the carbon atom of the alkene that has the most hydrogen atoms already on it. So when we look at the original molecule over here, the first thing we have to do is figure out how many hydrogen atoms are already on the double bond. We're not looking at hydrogen atoms um, on other carbon atoms. We just want to know how many hydrogen atoms are on the carbons of the double bond. This carbon atom on the left has one hydrogen. This carbon atom on the right has zero hydrogen. There's no hydrogen out here at all. When we add the HBr molecule, the hydrogen atom that we add wants to go with its buddies. So the hydrogen atom wants to go to the carbon atom that already has a hydrogen atom present. Um, let me modify these drawings over here. So what I'm going to do with these drawings is I am going to add this hydrogen in black that we already had on the molecule. And so when I am, um, when I'm trying to predict my product, I'm going to first decide where the new hydrogen should go. The new hydrogen goes onto the carbon atom that already has the most hydrogen. So then that means my new hydrogen is going to go here, and that means my bromine will go over here. And that, again, is the only product that we make. Um, it is kind of weird to have line structure that has hydrogens drawn onto it. So um, this would be the same molecule just without showing these two hydrogens without drawing them. Let's practice again. So here we have the same type of reaction. Uh, we are going to be focusing on these two carbon atoms right here. We have to initially draw the hydrogen atoms onto the carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond. So how many hydrogens are here? How many hydrogens are here? Now we're ready to predict our products. We're going to be working on these two carbon atoms right here. We've already got a couple of hydrogen atoms. Our new hydrogen atom wants to go with all of its buddies, so that means it wants to go out here to this carbon uh, right there like that, and then the other carbon will get the bromine. Let's keep practicing this. We have a couple of more. Um, so for this one, we've got two carbon atoms right here. Uh, we need to figure out how many hydrogens there are already on the molecule. Each one of the carbons already has one hydrogen, which means there's a tie. Uh, in that situation, the hydrogen could go to either one, either spot. So let's draw both possible products. Um, here I'm just redrawing the molecule, and now I'm going to put the new hydrogen on top and the new chlorine on the bottom. And our other option here, we'll draw the original hydrogen, new hydrogen down here, chlorine goes up here. Now if we um, convert this back into true line structure, so that means we're going to erase the hydrogens on the carbon atoms, so we can put it back into real line structure, like that. We get this molecule right here. This is a six-membered ring that has one chlorine attached to it. This is also a six-membered ring that has one chlorine attached to it. These are two drawings of the exact same molecule. All that I have to do like, is take this molecule and kind of rotate it a little bit. I mean, the carbon or the chlorine is pointing in a different direction, but if I rotate the drawing a little bit, my chlorine is in the bottom right hand side and over here again the chlorine is in the bottom right hand side. So again, these are two drawings of an identical molecule. These two molecules are identical. If they're identical, we doesn't make any sense to draw both of them. We only need to show one. Here we have one last example. We're going to be working on these two carbon atoms right here. We want to begin by thinking about how many hydrogen atoms are already present on these carbons. This one has zero hydrogens. This one over here also has zero hydrogen. So we have another situation where we have a tie. Uh, one option, again, we're working on these two guys. One option would be for the hydrogen to go here and the bromine to go here. We're doing bromine again. And the other option would be for the new hydrogen to go here and the bromine to go here. 
when we look at these two molecules, and we look at these two molecules, we can see that these are not identical molecules like what we had in the previous example. For example, um, in this molecule, both of the bromines are on the same carbon. And in this molecule over here, the bromines are on two different carbons. So that means that this, this particular reaction makes two different products. It makes both of these products right here. And sometimes that's the case as well. Now, for some reason, I duplicated these last four problems. So all of this right here, these are just duplicates of what we just did. Uh, now we have one last type of problem to look at. This is really similar to what we just did. This is the acid catalyzed addition uh, or hydration reaction, acid catalyzed hydration. We're adding water to the double bond. The water is added in two parts. One of the parts that we add is the hydrogen and the other part that we add is the OH. So again, it's a reaction where we're adding two different pieces and we have to think about which piece goes where. This reaction follows the same rule. We want to put the hydrogen with the hydrogens that are already on the molecule. So if we're looking at these two carbon atoms right here, we wanna think about what hydrogens are already present on those two carbon atoms. And when we add our new hydrogen, from the water, we want to put that new hydrogen with its buddies. The other portion that gets added to the molecule is the OH, just like that. Let's do our next example. We are working on these two carbon atoms. The one on the carbon on the left already has two hydrogens. So when we add another hydrogen, it will join them and the other carbon will get the OH. And this molecule, we're working with these two carbons. Um, both of them each have one hydrogen. We saw this in this situation. It doesn't matter where we draw the, the OH. We could draw it here or we could draw it up here, either place. This is just like um, reaction that we just did. And then last but not least, we are working with these two carbon atoms. Neither one of them has a hydrogen at all. So one of them will get the H and the other will get the OH. And we have another possibility where the hydrogen and the OH are just reversed. 